How's everybody doing? Everybody feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. It's a nice day outside. I've been feeling good, huh? Really, really nice. Oh, well, I take that back. talking to them but indirectly you're talking to them you over here talking but they listen you know they listening and then i'm just grateful how the lord opens up a door for you to be able to minister to people and let them know you know you need to come on into the hospital it's getting ready to rain judgment is coming and people can be talking about nonsense all around you but as soon as that judgment comes out it's quiet the nonsense just stops for a minute uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> we need to start talking about relationships and sex. And this is like, yeah, judgment is coming, y'all. Y'all need to get right. You know what I'm saying? You have been in church. You know what? Yeah, man, you, yeah, you need to go to church. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Things come up. So I thank the Lord for just allowing the door to open up. So that's my testimony. I thank God for that. Anybody that's got a testimony and want to share anything the Lord's done? Anybody got anything? Look like y'all quiet. I heard about somebody was going, was just ready. Anybody got a testimony? You know what I'm saying? Anybody got a testimony? We can just start. Thank the Lord for allowing me to, allowing all of us to get through the semester because there's some people that got probably got kicked out, couldn't make it, you know, to um, money-wise, um, health-wise, and these are all things, little things that I overlook often. So I just thank the Lord for keeping me and that I'm still in the house of the Lord doing this well. And my prayer is that as we go for the summer that we just come back even stronger, you know, that we don't, a lot of people um, have this anticipation of getting weaker because they're not around the saints, but if you discipline yourself, um, I'm talking to myself first, I will come back stronger, um, and I'm, I'm going to claim it, so, Amen. I thank God. Amen. Well, we praise God. <laughs> Testimonies is always in the <laughs> Testament, go ahead, Sabrina, testify. <laughs> My heart can even beat one more time. Yeah, the Lord already knows. I want to um, thank God just for today. I was uh, on the road and I had some serious road rage. Like I was getting mad at everybody on the road. Oh, and I was, was feeling like I'm one person driving a ride, and nobody on to drive. And, you know, I just, it was just crazy. And I ended up stopping my car on the parking, parking garage. And, like, the Lord just, like, chased chastised me, like, in the car. Like, and I just was like, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been talking to the people like that. Even though they couldn't hear me, like, I just knew, like, I shouldn't have been talking to the people like that. So I just thank the Lord for uh, chasing us and, and reproving us and correcting us when we're wrong and uh, just correcting me when I'm wrong and when I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing. He'll just come in and just and talk to me. It could be through the Word. It could be church and confirmation. So I just want to thank the Lord for that. And I just want to thank him for waking me up this morning. And thank you for my sister having a Holy Ghost. I never knew these back to say out loud. I really need to thank him because it's a whole lot of people in my family that pretend like they say, but they're not say. And it's really nice to know that my sister is one of the really good people to say now. She is her her name is written in the library. It is written in the book library. And I just pray that more people in my family will get saved. Yeah, 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 I can attest to that too. I mean, I did get pulled over. But I think you warning. Thank you, Jesus. No ticket. Thank you, God. So I'm sure you God. You know what I'm saying? I think the Lord for the warning. You got a couple warnings, but you know, I thank the Lord. God is merciful. No tickets. Thank you, Jesus. Not in the church band, though, right? No. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Church band, though. No, see, 
Actually, the, the time that I got put off shouldn't have got pulled over. You know, that's the end of the day. I wasn't speaking. I was, I was fine. I was thinking my time, too. They just wanted to pull me over. The second time I was speaking. You know, the right, Lord gave right. me mercy and grace. You know what I'm saying? Warning comes before the show. Yeah, the Lord gave me warning. Because so, I was on the way to do ministry work. So it was bad. I was like, thank you, Jesus. So I thank the Lord as well. Thank the Lord for his testimony. Go ahead, Jonathan. You have a testimony? Go ahead. I just want to thank the Lord for being faithful, even like through remembering and playing. Yes, he's always right. there because, mm. hey, long story short, you can be complaining about nobody being there, but he's <laughs> always reminding, he's always reminding that he's always there, he, that he's always listening into everything I'm saying or thoughts, whatever I need. He's always providing my provision, so I just want to thank him for just being so faithful and committed. Amen. Um, I just want to thank the Lord for keeping me and uh, uh, just and giving me so much peace after all I've been through this semester uh, through my order with my family or the death of my brother and financial aid. It's been so many things that um, probably in the past would have really shook me or I really would have shook me. But um, somehow I've been uh, at peace, and and uh, that's nothing but the grace of God. So um, I don't thank God for that, because without without Him, I know this is where we'll be at. Amen. Anybody else want to Go ahead. I want to thank the Lord for waking us this morning and getting folks out of our house and that he knows was pushing on buttons so he knows how much you can do it though. So anybody else got anything before we start? Thank the Lord for testimony, boy. You need them testimonies sometimes to testify that the Lord can keep you. And Jesus can be a fence all around you when nonsense is going on. You want to make you like hands with people pushing the buttons, but the fence all around you, so you can't get to him. So I thank the Lord for his mercy. And uh, go ahead. Oh, you got to say, I thought you, oh, you had a testimony yeah. about that fence? Go ahead. Okay, so um, I'm not in class this semester, and so I'm just working right now. And at work, there's this lady that like always has something to say. And so it's like hard to deal with her and like her negativity. So when I go home, kind of in like a funk. Well, yesterday I was in like a really bad funk, and I was doing my laundry, and like the laundry lid smashed on my hand, so it just made it even worse. So I was like, oh my goodness, went to work out, and I got home. I was like, you just need to read. And then she texts one of the sisters. She texts me. She's like, read Psalms uh, 91, and I was reading it, and oh my goodness, like it was just renewal. Like, jeez, and just it's not like. We know that he loves us, but how he loves us, like, it's, it's just ridiculous how much God loves us. And how he loves us is, it was just renewal, like, I can't explain it. I was just sobbing, like, Jesus! <laughs> 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 so definitely renewal, like. Psalm 91, one of my, one of my favorite verses, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And they keep your foot, you know, to the stomach. So God is God, you know, and that's all I want to get you together. Amen. Does anybody got anything else they want to share? Well, we praise God for the testimonies that's right on the camera. And the Bible study today, man, you know, I was kind of conflicted on what to talk about. I had something I was working on. And I didn't get to get it done. And I was sitting there like, Lord, I'm not going to get this done. And I feel like this is what I'm going to, this is what I'm feeling. I, I, I was going through other stuff. I'm like, Lord, this is, I feel this. And I was not getting it done. And uh, the Lord gave me the grace to take from that what it is he wanted, the main subject. And he, and he put it in my heart, my mind, go this direction with it. So go with it, but take it in this direction. So I was like, thank you, Jesus. So uh, the subject tonight, this is something we talked about some time ago um, when we was fasting during the week. Um, but I said, you know, if it's the Lord's will, I'll revisit it. And it was the Lord's will for me to revisit it. Um, so the Bible says tonight is entitled, This is Why We All Need Prayer, Part 2. This is why we all need prayer. Just looking at the world and the things going on, wickedness in, in, in diverse places, killings, famine, everything. This is why we all need prayer. So we're going to go ahead. 
I go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the gathering. God, we thank you for another awesome opportunity that you've given us to be here. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Our souls shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving. We enter into your courts with praise. Thankful unto you and bless in your name for truly you are worthy of praise from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is to be magnified. The name of the Lord is to be praised and exalted. God, we take time just to exalt your name. You're high and lifted up. Your train fills the temple. God, you're worthy to be praised. We just want to take time just to tell you, thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. All your benefits that you daily load us with, God. That we're so unworthy of God. We just want to tell you, thank you, God, for looking out for us, oh God. We thank you for your many blessings and mercies and grace, God. We should be in our grave right now, but God, we give you thanks and praise, God, for looking out for us, God. We just want to tell you, thank you, God, for being an awesome God. Now God, I ask tonight in the name of Jesus, God, anoint your word, Father God, anoint your servant, that I may speak that which you have me to speak, Father God, bind every distraction of your, every hindrance, God, that would dare hinder your word from prevailing in the atmosphere. Anoint the ears of your people, God, that you may speak to them in an hour, Father God, where so many are weary and well-doing, God. Cause them to hear, Father God. Cause your word, Father God, to find and fall, Father God, on good ground, Father God, that they may call Father God, we to bring forth fruit, Father God. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Minister to those that's going to watch the video, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. Cause them, God, to be stirred up, God, and turn back to you, Father God. Cause your people, Father God, to know, Father God, that all things are working together for their good, oh God. Even though it may not feel good, oh God. It's working together for our good, God. So we give you thanks, God, that you're working the good and the bad for our good, God. So we give you thanks and praise. Have your way tonight, Father God. Feel free to walk through the atmosphere. Say what you want to say, God. Use your servant as you will. This is your people. This is your hour. This is your word. So have your way tonight, God. I give you free reign, oh God. Let the Spirit speak, oh God, in the atmosphere. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, this is why we all need prayer. And Jonathan's going to go ahead and hit the screen so it can come up. And the characters we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about a couple, uh, one of my, uh, two of my favorite characters tonight, Peter and Paul. And they're going to deal with some things uh, that were going on in their lives, which is why we all need prayer. We, we all need prayer. At all times, we always need to be in prayer because the enemy, if we're not praying, the enemy will easily slip in and try to take us out because his goal for us, his thoughts towards us are the opposite of God's thoughts. God's thoughts towards us are peace and not evil to give us an expected end. But the devil's thoughts towards us are evil and not peace because he has an expected end. He wants for us. So he looks to try to destroy us and take us out. And in this story we're getting ready to talk about tonight, the Lord, and the first one, we're going to deal with Peter. The Lord is uh, talking with Peter, and the Lord is as near in the time when he's getting ready to go to the cross. And Peter, you know, lets the Lord know that wherever you're going to go, Lord, you know, I'm going to go with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be with you no matter where you're going to go. And the Lord is mindful of what Peter is saying. And he begins to let him know something that Peter doesn't know or he isn't aware of. And this is why it's so important that we need prayer. There is something that the enemy wants to use to take Peter out. The enemy is after Peter. But the Lord begins to let Peter be mindful of what the enemy has in store. So we're going to go ahead and jump into it. I'm excited about Jesus and what he has to say. It says in verse 21, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as we. Now the first thing the Lord does is that he says, Simon, Simon. Notice he doesn't say Peter. He says, Simon, Simon. He speaks to Peter's other uh, name. He speaks to his old nature. He deals with him and he speaks to him right here. He says that Satan has a desire to have you. Satan has a desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Simon, that he may destroy who you are now in Christ, to cause you to revert back to who you used to be in the world. He has a desire to destroy you. He doesn't want to see the work of the kingdom be worked through you and to see you used for the kingdom. His objective is to destroy you. 
This is why we all need prayer, that we remain sober-minded in the things of God and not allow ourselves to get comfortable at any moment, at any time, because the enemy is always looking for an opportunity to sift us as we and to destroy us and cause us not to carry out the things that God would have us to do. And any time the Lord gives us a word, he always is mindful of where we are. And he gives us that word as a warning to get us to sober up and get our minds back where it needs to be. Because if our minds are not where it needs to be, if we're not prayed up and fasted up and reading like we need to be, or not mindful of the word that he's speaking in season, we can find ourselves falling and we'll find ourselves when the enemy attacks us at a place that if we were mindful of what God had already spoken, then this would have not got the best of us. I put up here an example of something I talked about a long time ago, and the Lord brought something else to mind with this thing I'm getting ready to talk about that I didn't even think about because it, it wasn't for me to say it then, but it is for right now. I'm reminded of a time uh, some years ago, one of the saints had just gotten saved and they was getting ready to go on a co-op or an internship. They had just got saved and they get ready to go, I think it was to Atlanta, and uh, they had just got saved and they were going down there and the Lord put it in my spirit to call them up. Now, I don't just call people up randomly, you know what I'm saying? People go out of town, they go here, they go there. But sometimes the Lord may put something on pressing in your spirit to call this person or that person or to check in or give you a dream because he's mindful of his people. When I call this saint up and I say, hey, praise the Lord, you know what I'm saying? called you up just to see how you're doing this and that and this was on my mind and I wanted to remind you to make sure you do this this and that while you're in Atlanta you make sure you do this you do that and make sure because the Lord put it on my heart to make sure to, that you do these things and they said okay y'all yeah, gonna do these things and they hung up the phone and later on um, they told me this story that when they hung up the phone they really kind of just laughed off what I said to them almost mocking what I said to them and they were not mindful of what I had spoke to them and it's so funny they sent me a Facebook message with the same thing I saved it to this day that that night they had a dream and the Lord gave them a dream and in the dream they were being eaten by hundreds and thousands of killer spiders and they were just consuming them. And they woke up out this dream and, oh, Jesus, what was that dream about? Like, man, I'm going to die in this dream. And the Lord, I never forget this. I'm a, if I gotta, if I gotta lock this message, I'm gonna lock it in Facebook. They shut it down. I'm gonna forward it to my email address. So I never forget this story. They sent me this long, drawn-out story. If y'all ever send me a story, just just hit the bait, the basic parts. I don't want to read a two or three page story. Just <laughs> give me the the, the 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 potatoes of what happened in the story. That's all I got. I don't need all the rest of you. You can just give me a summary. But they sent me this long page. Uh, pretty much what happened was that when they woke up and they said, "Lord, what was this dream about?" And they said, "The Lord, the Holy Ghost." spoke to him and they said, you did not obey what my servant Antoine told you to do. You were not mindful of what he told you because he wasn't just telling you something just to tell you that. And they got up and they were obedient to what I said. And later on, they found out why um, they needed to be obedient. They came to find out that the area where they were living in, where they were co op in or internship, there was a strong demonic force or influence in that area. It was a satanic system set up in that area and the things I told them about God was mindful of them but they weren't thinking about it they were just kind of laughed it up but God was mindful of us that's why we all need prayer that we keep our minds focused and sober that we don't cause ourselves to get distracted and say man I don't need to do that I'm good you know I'm good to go I got Jesus with me I don't need to do this or do that that we keep our minds focused and that God when God is speaking to us that we take heed to it because the enemy is looking for an opportunity to take us out. If he can take that log that's near all the rest of the fires, if he can come to separate that log and cause that fire to burn by itself for a little while, after some time it'll go out. But if we keep our minds sober and where it needs to be in the Lord, that we won't, it won't go out. God will cause that log to stay unlit. He will cause it to stay on fire if we're mindful of the things that God is trying to say to us. And that person was mindful of what I said from here on out. And I said, man, that's an awesome testimony. Years later, if I'm ever teaching Bible, so I'm going to use that example of why we all need prayer. We need to be mindful of the things that God says to us. And God reminds Peter of this. That the enemy looks to sift you as we, but look what the Lord says. But, which disregards everything else that was just said. He says, but I have prayed for thee. 
that thy faith faileth not. I have prayed for you. This is what the enemy wants to do to you, but I have prayed for you. It's one thing when people pray for you, but when the Lord lets it be known that I have prayed for you, this is getting ready to come your way. I want to let you know right now, this, this is going to happen. I don't want you to, to think that uh, this ain't going to happen. No, it's going to happen. But I have prayed for you that when it does happen, that your faith doesn't fail. And when you are converted, go and strengthen your brethren. When this temptation, when this test comes, when the trials of life happen to you, that you don't allow the things of life to cause you to lose your faith and your trust in God. That you don't allow circumstances to cause you to be rocked in your walk with the Lord. Many people in the day and age we live in, they allow situations to rock their faith. They cause them to walk away from the Lord. And it causes them to start to water down the gospel. And cause them to start to doubt whether God can do this or whether God can do that. And we never want to get to the place where we become watered down with situations and things that happen in our lives. Where even with the, the loss of a loved one, we don't want our hearts and our minds to be shaken. That God, where were you at when this person died? Where were you at? I put my trust, my everything. I looked up to this person. Now you took this person out of my life. God, what's going on? I pray for you that your faith doesn't fail. And that after you get through this situation that you can go and strengthen somebody else and let them know that it's not over yet. That you don't have your, you don't lose faith in the Lord. That what he has started in you, he will finish it. The other example I put up there was about even a friend of mine who had lost his grandfather and dad in the same exact year. And he didn't have a place to live. He didn't have a job. He didn't have a place to live. He didn't have anything. And many people would allow that situation to cause them to say, God, man, where are you at? I lost my dad and my grandfather in the same year, God. I ain't got a place to live. I don't have a job. I don't have anything, God. What's going on right there? And in that situation, it's easy to cause your faith to fail right there. But that person didn't allow their faith to fail right there. They began to pray. They began to fast. They began to seek the Lord. And they didn't, call, they didn't allow their faith to be shaken right there. And in the midst of it, because they put their trust in the Lord and kept their faith in God in a one week span. I've never, this, 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 there's certain testimonies, y'all. Y'all don't forget because you mess around and want to pray that testimony yourself one day. <laughs> in the span of one week, the Lord not only blessed them with a job, he blessed them with a car, he blessed them with a place to stay, he blessed them with a laptop and $20,000. And I said, when I heard that testimony, I said, Lord, in the name of <laughs> my brother over there, God. And Lord, if you be so inclined, God, if you want to bless me with some money, God, feel free in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I found myself like, man, that's a testimony. He gave me 20000 I mean, you want to shoot something this way, you know. It's a blessing to give and receive. You know what I'm saying? I thought about that testimony, but it, it just showed how mindful God is of us, and when we don't allow our faith to be shaken in the midst of tragedy or things that may come our way, God is faithful and he's mindful of us and he tells Peter, once you have been converted, once you have gone through that test, once your faith has been tried, go and strengthen your brothers and sisters. Go and give a testimony to them and strengthen them so that in the times of affliction and trials and situations, when they feel like they want to give up, you can go and give a testimony to them that even I myself, I don't put myself on a pedestal as if to say I'm high up here and you're down here. No, we all are trying to make it to heaven. And I want to let you know that this is where I was at and this is what happened to me. I thought I was this and that, but the Lord humbled me and this situation happened and if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have perished. But the Lord, he prayed for me And my, my faith was not shaken And I'm able to come and give you a testimony That if God can keep me, he can keep you too He is mindful of his people That's why we all need prayer That we make sure that we're walking with the Lord And we're mindful of the things that God tells us And in this story As the Lord begins to talk about what goes on with Peter I went to Matthew to go on with the story in verse 69, in this story, it's interesting, y'all. Now Peter sat without in the palace. Now he was outside in the courtyard, y'all. He was chilling, you know what I'm saying, out there. Now this is a time when they had just captured Jesus, and he's out there. Now the Lord had already let him know that you're going to deny me three times, Peter. This was what, it, what he was talking about when the Lord told him that the, the enemy desires to sift you as weak. Now Peter is out there, he is out there warming his hands, you know, he's out there relaxing. And it says, a damsel came unto him saying, now this was the set up person. That was the one person that was going to set him up to fail. She came up to him saying, 
Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. This is why we need to stay alert and not allow a moment of weakness to slip in, y'all. But he denied before them all. So she was the setup person that caused him to deny before everybody that I know not what thou says. I don't know what you talking about. You was the one that was with Jesus. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, y'all. Hey, man, I wasn't with Jesus. I don't know what she talking about. She might be on that stuff. I don't know what she talking about right now. We don't want to forget who we believe in. And when he was going out into the porch, when he tried to go somewhere else, I'm going to go over here, man. They're trying to set me up. I'm going to go over here real quick and try to hide out. He went out to the porch, and another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. This lets us, be, lets us know that people see us, y'all. People are always watching us. That's why we have to remain in prayer. People are watching our lifestyle, things we do. We can't hide out and try to blend in with the crowd because you ain't going to blend in with the crowd because you were not created to blend in. You were created to stand out. Before you was formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. He ordained you and he sanctified you. Sanctified means he set you apart. So you was already, before you got there, you were set apart not to fit in. So you ain't going to be somewhere I'm just going to go over here so they can't see me. No, somebody else saw you. Even if you run down the street, you over here trying to do something else. Oh, oh somebody else saw you. You you was with Jesus. Why are you? Hey, 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 hey. I don't know what you're talking about. No, the Lord, it shows us here why we have to always be in prayer and keep our minds alert and mindful of the things God has said because if we're not, we can find ourselves caught off guard in the midst of a situation and Peter was caught off guard. He tried to run away, but the world will point you out. The the world will point you out real quickly, no matter how you try to run away. The world will point you out and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't fit in with us. You are one of the other ones. And again, he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. So it went from Jesus to I don't know this man that you're talking about. Hey, you didn't went from Jesus to some random guy now. Man, I don't know this man that you're talking about. Now, this is the second time he even made an oath. This is why, y'all, we need prayer that we never get to the place that whether afflictions and trials and stuff like that comes to America, like the stuff that's going on overseas where Christians are being persecuted, that we don't come to the place where persecution comes to us and we start to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know this Jesus that you're talking about. This man, who, who is it again? You know, G Jesus or who? Uh, I mean, I, I, I believe I believe in a, a Jesus, you know, but I don't know what Jesus you referring to. You know what I'm saying? My life is on the line right now, so I don't know what Jesus. You know, there's a lot of Jesus. You know what I mean? Can you be specific about which one you're talking about before you kill me? You know, I just need, I need to know what, what's, what's, what's his last name. You know, so you got to get some information. You know what Jesus they talking about. You know what I'm saying? But we need prayer, y'all, that we don't find ourselves compromising in the midst of situations to where we begin to deny the Lord. And Peter said with an oath, I do not know this man. And after a while, now we don't know what a while is, y'all. A while could have been an hour. It could have been 30 minutes. It could have been a couple hours. It could have been, you know, halfway through the day. It said after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said, Peter, surely thou also art one of them. For now, look at this, y'all, right here. This is why we need prayer, y'all, because people are mindful of you. They know when you stand out. They, they see there's something about you. The Holy Ghost will make you stand out. Whether you want to or not, the Holy Ghost will, will cause you to stand out. Now, if you just full-blown just in, in a world, then you might not. But when you're walking with the Lord, the Lord will cause you to stand out. The light that is in you will cause you to to just stand out from amongst those that's in darkness around you. And look what they said. For thy speech bereath thee, meaning your accent betrays you. Your speech and the way you talk, there's something about you. It testifies that you're different than everybody else. There's something about you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You was with Jesus. You was that one. You can't try to blend in with everybody else. You was that one. Wait a minute. Ain't you that one? Ain't you? I saw you going to SPOC. Yeah. You was that one. Hey, I don't know. 
SBOC. What's that stand for? I don't know. I was, I might have came past SBOC. I had to look at the paper. I don't think I was in the, but no, no, yo, no, no. Yo, 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 that's all right. Yeah, you was in the Bible study. I remember you. You, I don't know what, what you did, but you was in the Bible study. And this is why we need prayer, y'all, because the world is always watching us. They're mindful of the things we're doing. And then let's be known here. Peter, he said, no. Your speech gives it away that you, you're you not like everybody else. You're somebody who's been caught up. And look what Peter says. Uh, Jonathan, go ahead and read that for me. 74? Yeah, 74. All right. Then. Then, he, then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cop crew. Then he began to curse, y'all. Now, if you want to identify with the world, man, he started cussing and swearing. Yeah. The world was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you belong to us. These are the things that saints, we don't do. We ain't out there cussing and fighting and doing things like that. But Peter started to do these things just to make sure they know, no, I blend in with you. I'm just like y'all. He started cussing. Then immediately the cop crew just like the Lord said. And look what happened right after the cock crew. Now, it did, now it, it, this, this didn't come to mind then. It had to happen three times, then it came to mind. This is why we need prayer, y'all. We need, always need prayer. And then Peter remembered. It was only after he failed that he remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and he wept bitterly. He didn't remember what Jesus said unto him until the third time. This is why we all need prayer. That we remember the word of God. That we don't just get caught up in wanting to get our degree and graduate and get a good job and move away and forget about the word of God. We never want to get to a place that we forget about the word of God. You don't know how encouraging and what an excitement it was this weekend for those that came down this weekend to watch the things that God has done in the midst of this ministry. You don't know the things that people have gone through. And some of those people I do know. And I know some of the things that they've gone through and are going through right now. And you don't know the encouragement that those this Bible study has brought to those people in the midst of the things that they're going through in their life. This is why we all need prayer, y'all. That we keep our minds set on Jesus. That we take the word of God with us no matter where we go. Because the enemy real quickly will try to come in and cause you to become comfortable where you are. To where you become comfortable. To where all of a sudden you go from being on fire to now you're lukewarm. And you don't never want to come to a place where the word has, has convicted you and has reminded you day in and day out. This and this and this and that. And then you take that word like, yeah, yeah, that's good. And you put it in a folder and just put it on your shelf and go away with your degree. Like, yeah, and you put your degree up there as if to say your degree and your word should be sitting on the same shelf. But that word should be somewhere where it's readily available at a moment's notice. And you don't want it to be where you just become comfortable. And all of a sudden you out there and you need the Lord to come and see about you. And this is what happened to Peter. He set that word on the shelf and he forgot what Jesus said to him. It said then he remembered the word of Jesus. After he failed, he remembered. It wasn't before that he remembered. It was after he failed. This is why we all need prayer. That we keep the word of God in our hearts and in our minds. That even when tests or things come our way, we're mindful of what Jesus has already said. So that when the enemy comes... We're not caught up guard. Oh man, man, how did Jesus? I'm not Jesus. How did I slip right here? I warned you. I gave you one. I sent you a dream. I gave you a vision. I had people prophesy to you. Somebody text you by accident. You saw a milk truck going by, saying things on the milk truck. You know they gave you a word. Jesus is soon to come. You know what I'm saying? This stuff. Even when I'm traveling up the road to Toledo, man, there's companies that's got this big cross up there that says Jesus is the answer. You know what I'm saying? They, it was, things will just testify to you and to get your attention. God will use little things to get your attention. And we never want to lose focus on what the Lord is saying. This is why we need prayer. And this one right here, y'all, this one really touched my heart. We're going to jump into Paul. And Paul was a mighty man of God. And this was the section that I was a little conflicted on, y'all, about going into with the Lord. A lot of to fit right on in with what we're talking about tonight, about why we need prayer. 
And Paul here had been traveling to places, y'all. He had been preaching the gospel. And now the Lord was calling him. The Lord was calling him to come to Corinth. And understand, the place of Corinth was a place full of wickedness. There was all these synagogues set up. They had all this idolatry, sex gods and orgies, and all this type of wickedness was going on in the town. Full of idolatry, full of sin. And easily, it can cause somebody who, if the Lord has sent you there, whether to do a job or something like that, it can cause you real quick to, to be intimidated and be fearful and not want to do the things of God. But this is why we need prayer, that we don't allow our, our eyes to cause us to doubt the things that God would have us to do. That we don't allow fear to slip in and cause us to doubt. That we never allow what we see to hinder what we believe. So after these things, Paul departed from Athens and he came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because the Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. So understand that Paul had came to Corinth and he met Priscilla and Aquila, which was mighty men and women of God in the Bible. They did some awesome stuff, y'all. They was a tag team. Like they remind me of Leslie and Pat. You know what I'm saying? They were like a tower. Cameron and Sonny, they were a tag team. They always mentioned Aquila, you know what I'm saying? Then I thought Priscilla in there. But they was a mighty team. And Paul met them there in the midst of that place because uh, Claudius, had, uh, Claudius had kicked the Jews out of Rome. So they had set up shop right there. And Paul met them up there in Corinth. And it says, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation, they were tent makers. Now understand here, y'all, that a tent maker was a person who supports himself through a skill. And uh, understand that the place where Paul had set this up with was the marketplace. The marketplace was where a community buys and sells goods and services. It's where business gets done, and it's where an entire town goes to earn a living. It was the center place to reach people. And the Lord was so mindful of that place that the Lord allowed Paul's ministry to line up with what his, his, his occupation was, his job. And that just shows how awesome the Lord is, how he can cause your ministry, whatever your gift is, and things that he's called you to do. To line up with your occupation or your job or what it is you want to do for a living. He caused it. Paul set up his tent to line up with the things of God. This is why we need prayer. That while we're here again, that we don't allow whatever we're majoring in, whatever we're getting a degree in or whatever. That we don't cause it to cause us to neglect the things of God altogether. But not so with Paul. Paul didn't allow his occupation to interfere with the things of God. God used, God caused his ministry to fit in with his job. His ministry fit exactly in with his job. I'll put up there an example, my boy Patrick. Now, a lot of times, y'all don't hear a lot about Patrick. Y'all hear about Leslie when she get up here and she teaching, you know, she get the prophet sign and speaking the word of God. Leslie is anointed, y'all. But a lot of times, y'all don't hear about the things that God has done with Patrick. And one day, he was sharing a story, and I, I just talked to him some time ago. So I had the facts right. You know, I want to make sure because the Lord put them in my spirit when I was working with him. That's how I know it was the Lord. And he confirmed what I'm getting ready to say. But Patrick, even before he got saved, he was seeking after becoming a nurse. And he wanted to work in the hospitals and things like that. And then he got saved. And the Lord still had him operating in that area. And in the midst of him operating in that area, one thing he began to give a testimony about is that while he was working in the hospital and being a nurse and things like that, he began to talk about how when he was in the hospital, he would be praying for people. Even when he's making up beds, Lord, save, deliver. God began to heal this person. In the name of Jesus, floating up the pillars, God began to break the strongholds. God began to cause this person to turn unto you. He began to allow God show how his ministry and the things he called him to do fit right on in with his purpose and what God called him to do. It lines straight up with what God would have him to do. He didn't have to worry about getting saved and saying, man, I don't think, I guess, I don't know what field I'm going to go into, man, God. I don't know what you want me to do. No, what he already had a desire to do fit right on in with his giftings and what God called him to do. It lines straight up with what his calling 
and what his purpose was. Our purpose was, uh, besides living saved and reading our word and praying and fasting and all those type of things, your purpose is to glorify God through your life, your body, your field of study, and be a witness for him and not compromise where you are. He didn't compromise where he was, but he God allowed his ministry, what he was called to do, to line up with his occupation and things like that. That's what's so awesome about the Lord. This is why we need prayer, y'all, because the Lord is mindful of what it is he's called us to do. I was looking at those little cards when people wrote down certain questions they had about things, and one of them talked about purpose and how do I find my purpose and do those type of things. Your purpose is to preach and teach uh, the gospel, spread the gospel wherever you go and live this thing that your life will be a witness to the Lord, that we are witnesses for the Lord and the Lord will cause things to line up with the things he calls you to do. He will cause your job to line up with that. Mike Murdoch a mighty powerful man of God said a very profound statement one day and I was listening to him. He said, you don't decide who you are. You discover who you are. God has already decided who you are. But you have to come to a place when God saves you and he delivers you. He will show you and you will discover who it is he has called you to do. You may not understand why. Pat may not understand why he was going into that nursing school, but he had a desire to take care of people. Those take certain type of giftings, because I'm going to let y'all know right now, I love people, but I don't know if I could be in there taking care. I didn't heard some testimonies of people taking care of sick people, and I, I can take care of sick person, singular, not plural, but I don't know about taking care of people. Those take certain type of giftings. It's a certain type of anointing that God gives you, because God is giving you a power and anointing to operate in that certain place and when you get saved and you begin to see oh this is why God is driving me this way this is why it's linking up with my ministry and my purpose and Paul was able to use uh, that to link up with his ministry as a tent maker you can go into places that other people normally couldn't go as a tent maker you can set your tent up and you can not only set it up but you can start selling things and be able to take care of yourself and uh, provide a marketplace to start preaching the gospel. God was so mindful of Paul. Paul wasn't just out there just being zealous and preaching. Like, well, I'm just going to go out here and preach by faith. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no food to eat. I don't got no job. I ain't got nothing. I'm just going to go by faith. No, he wasn't crazy. He understood he needed to eat. He needed to have a life and things like that. But God allowed his trade or his skill, what he learned, what he got an education for, to link up with his ministry. So it all works together for his good. God is so mindful. That's why it's so awesome uh, uh, how God works all things after the counsel of his own will. That's why we all need prayer that we walk and do the things God would have us to do. And we don't get caught up in this wicked world. And while Paul was here working with Priscilla and Aquila, working in his ministry, in his occupation, then it says he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. And he persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. This is why it's so important, y'all, that we know the word of God. Paul began to minister, and everywhere when he was in with the synagogues, he began to try to speak the word to them and let them know, this is this Jesus that I'm preaching to you. And he began to just preach to all these Jews and the Greeks. He was ready to be a vessel used of the Lord. Wow. This is why we need prayer, y'all, because even in our hospitals where Pat goes, he has to know the word of God. You'd be surprised that Pat knows the word, y'all. He may not be up front right here preaching and teaching and doing the things like Leslie because that's not necessarily his giftings or what God has put in him to do, but his giftings and what God has called him to do. God uses him in that field. He's in a backdrop doing what God has for him to do. And what them, those two do together, they complement each other. Their, her, her giftings and his giftings, they complement each other so that God is glorified in whatever they set out to do. And so too, Paul and his the occupation and things like that, he was able to go for and minister to the people because he knew the word of God. We got to get to a place where we know the word. You ain't got to know the whole word, but you need to be able to know enough to be able to listen to the Holy Ghost even when it's time for you to minister to somebody to where you put the word in you to where now when it's time to minister to somebody, they may have a lot more facts. They may seem like they got their PhD and this and that, and they may know all this type of nonsense that means absolutely nothing, but the Holy Ghost is Jesus. He know more than anybody. So when your trust is in the Lord, your trust ain't in this wisdom. Paul said, my speech, when he went to preach to people, my speech wasn't enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit 
spirit and power. That your faith is not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In the power of God, it can destroy the wisdom of men. It can tear down that nonsense they try, they try to tell you. you know, at the end of the day, all that type of stuff you talking about, man, don't mean nothing. You need the Holy Ghost. That's the only thing that matters right now. You need to be saved. You need to stop worshiping these false gods and these wicked gods. Pray, y'all. We this is why we all need prayer. I've been feeling in my spirit one day, y'all. I don't know, but it's gonna be one of these days. I'm gonna walk in that room over there. When they over there, they ringing that bell. Uh, in that Indy, I'm just gonna walk in one day, man. Hey, man. Everybody needs to repent in here. Turn to the Lord from this wickedness that is going on to this unknown God in here. The Lord. The remission of sins and people to turn from your wicked ways. Who is it? It is Jesus Christ that was crucified, not Buddha. He is a wicked God. And you need to try to everybody in the room. Since y'all already worship and lift your hands. Right now. And we're going to start praying. We ain't going to pray to Buddha. We're going to pray to Jesus. Right now, I'm going to come around. I'm going to pray for y'all. I'm going to anoint everybody. Just lift your hands. Close your eyes. Your eyes are already closed. But since I'm already in the room, I'm going to pray for you. And we're going to break this Buddha spirit. Pray for that spirit that I just walk in and start laying hands. Hey, y'all, I'm gonna be late to Bible study. Y'all, somebody else start teaching. BJ, just get up and start teaching. I'm gonna be busy for a little while. I'll take another state with me and I'll start laying hands. Lay everybody out. All right, y'all, I'm out. I'm gonna let the Holy Ghost do the rest of the work. I'm gonna go on to Bible study. I pray for that type of spirit because the Lord is mindful of where people are and the crazy things that they are doing. And even here, they were doing a lot of wicked things. And Paul had to preach the gospel and he had to be mindful where the people were. And he was bold in the things of God and he spoke to the people but look how they responded to the things of God as we get ready to see and as Paul was speaking to him it says here in verse 5 that when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ now right here y'all this is why we all need prayer. Paul, Silas, and Timotheus were workers with Paul in the preaching of the gospel. And when they came, Paul was so pressed in his spirit. Not only was he preaching to these Jews and Greeks and things like that, but he had this pressing. I don't know if you ever had that to where you had a pressing. You were just somewhere and you just had a pressing in your spirit. Like, man, I've got to say something, man. I've had it to where you're so full of the Holy Ghost. Like, man, it's just too much wickedness going on. I don't care who's out there at the president of the university there. Man, we got to turn from this wickedness in here. And you get everybody's attention. It don't matter who in here. You want you, your position means absolutely nothing in the kingdom of God being the president of this university. It means nothing. I outrank you in here. As a saint of God, I outrank you in the kingdom of God. And now what needs to happen is you need to turn from your wicked ways because I feel it in my spirit. And when the Lord is with you, you don't have to be fearful. This is why we need prayer that we don't become fearful. Paul had a pressing in his spirit to begin to preach the word of God unto them. It says, I put this example through the song of intercession. That's why I wanted her to play a song that was on my mind. I was thinking about it earlier today. In that song with William and Dow, he sings the song. He talks about in the song um, that if they're looking for you, let them find you in me. If they're looking for you, let them find you in me. People are looking for something, but what they're looking for is Jesus. And if the song says, let them find you in me, Lord, cause them to find you in me. I don't want to just become comfortable, Lord, but I want them to find you in me. That when I'm pressed in my spirit to begin to speak the word of God, that I don't be fearful, God, but that they find you in me. They're trying to find something, God, but what they're trying to find is you, God, and cause Cause me, God, to be stirred up, even if I'm by myself, God. Causing me to be stirred up in my spirit and let them know that it's Jesus who was crucified that you're looking for. That's who you're after. That's what you've been after all this time. And Paul was pressed in his spirit. And verse number six, John, let read verse number six for me. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemy, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own head. I am clean. From henceforth, I will go unto the Gentiles. Now understand, Paul began to preach to them, and they began to oppose themselves. Meaning they began to oppose what it was that Paul was saying, they blasphemed. So he shook his garments, 
He began to shake the dust off his feet as Jesus talked about. When you go and preach the gospel, you tell somebody and they reject you, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony that they've heard the gospel, that they have no excuse. So if they die today, they will stand before the Lord on judgment day and can never say they never heard the gospel. Begin, he began to shake his garment and he said unto him, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean because I've given you the gospel now. You are out here doing some wickedness. And I've come to let you know you need to turn from your wickedness unto Jesus. And you blaspheme me. So now I'm turning from you and I'm going to the Gentiles. This is why, y'all, we all need prayer that we will continue to do the things God would have us to do. And when we go and do the things of God, this even testifies in Ezekiel 33. It talks about how with the watchman, that if he sees the enemy coming and he doesn't warn the people and they die and they go to hell, their blood will be on his hands because he didn't warn the people. But if the enemy comes in and he warns the people and they die and they go to hell, he will be guiltless because the blood will be on their own hands. So when we bring the gospel to people, when we tell people, then they are accountable for the things that were spoken. Now, sometimes people may find themselves getting offended, but at the end of the day, the word is the word. If it told you to repent and turn from your wicked ways, you may not have liked that tone. But at the end of the day, it was still the gospel being preached and you will still be accountable for the things that God is saying. And you never wanted to be that God passes you over. You don't never want it to be that God gave you an opportunity and you passed up your opportunity. And because you were just worried about you. Because he said, I'm clean, and now I'm about to go to the Gentiles. I'm about to go to somebody else because you have rejected the word that God has for you. And he departed thence, and he entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue, meaning his house was right next door to the house of God. His house was right next door to the house of God. And it said, Crispus, the chief, meaning the leader and the ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. This is why, y'all, we need prayer that we're mindful of the fact that the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few, y'all. The harvest is ripe, y'all. The harvest right now is so ripe for people to, who need the word of God, who need to hear the word of God. God needs us to be mindful of these things, that the harvest is plentiful. And this man being a leader, not only did he believe in his whole family, but there was people who was listening, the Corinthians that heard it and believed and were baptized. This shows how mindful God is of his people and why we all need prayer. Because people need to be delivered. They need to be saved. And because Paul was obedient to what God said, God began to save and deliver one by one because he was obedient to what God was saying in the midst of that situation. And look what it says right here. This was powerful, y'all. This stuck with me. Then, right after that, then spent the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. He said, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Be not afraid, but speak and don't hold your peace. Now, nowhere in the text does it ever illuminate that Paul was fearful. But God is always mindful of things that's going on on the inside of us. God knows what's going on. God knows when there's areas in our lives where we might be fearful, where we might get scared. And the Lord brings this out for a specific reason. That Paul, don't be fearful. But I need you to speak. I need you to be obedient and speak the things of God. Some time ago, there was a Bible study that was called, Trust Me, It's Worth the Investment. And I began to talk about that the single greatest investment that you could ever make is not in stocks, it's not in bonds, it's not in 401k, it's not in none of that nonsense. That the single greatest investment that you could ever make is taking the time to share the gospel with somebody who doesn't know Jesus. That's the single greatest investment that you can ever make because the gospel, it ain't getting no negative returns. You ain't got to check the stock market and that the gospel is down 0.15%. It's losing stock. It's dropping over. The gospel ain't losing stock. The gospel is always reaching. It's at the top. The Dow is. It's going to read. The gospel is at the top of everything. Ain't no other nonsense up there that's on the same level as Jesus. I wish I would go on TV and got to talking about economics. And you know, 
<laughs> there's a stock out there. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's dropping out there. But you know, there's a stock on the stock market. You know, you can't see it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta see. You gotta see it in the spirit. And it's at the top of the stock market. It ain't dropped since Jesus then died and rose. It's been at the top ever since, boy. Well, what's that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Let me go ahead and give you. Y'all got a little bit of time. Let me go ahead and tell you about that stock. It's that stock in Jesus. This Jesus Christ. The stock of Jesus. I heard about. Yeah, I don't know Let me go ahead and explain it a little bit. Y'all got some time. Get this on camera. Make sure everybody hears about it. Put Jesus right on the stock market, right at the top. It has never lost its value. And the Lord begins to let Paul know, speak and don't hold your peace. I need you to speak and be obedient to what I'll have you do. And look what the Lord says right here. For I am with thee. You are not by yourself. I am with you. I am with you. This is why we all need prayer, y'all. For I am with you. And no man, no man, it don't matter how the enemy threatens you, it don't matter what they got to say, no man shall sit on the hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. I have many people in this city. That's why I need you not to close your mouth. I need you to speak because I have many people in this place. I put up there that restaurant, y'all. Some time ago, I was in BJ's restaurant, and this was some years ago, probably. Me and Chris and some other people, we sitting in a restaurant being loud, obnoxious, and eating, and enjoying. That was really me, but Chris and them were just there. <laughs> and uh, we were sitting in there eating and enjoying ourselves, and I'll never forget this. I was in there telling some stories, and it's interesting how people around you are listening to the things you're saying. I'm in there telling these stories about stuff going on in the spiritual realm, and I begin to talk about, I don't know if Chris remember it. I think I'm talk about these, these spirits and these demonic stuff going on and this spirit leaving and going and trying to fight the angel at this church and all this demonic stuff that was going on and strongholds and, and 23 minutes in hell and people burning for eternity. And while I was sitting there just talking, there's all these people on the table, Cassandra and all of them I think was there, Darnell or one of them. BJ might have been there. We were all just sitting there, I was just telling this story. And yeah, man, and I was watching, she was talking about this 23 minutes in hell and all that stuff. And while I was talking... Chris just happened to look over, and it was this family. They had to be maybe five feet away. It was this family, the mother, the, the husband, the kids. You know, a nice, looked like a nice little family. Got maybe a, a house, a picket fence, two cars, two kids. Nice, simple life. It seemed like, you know, there's a family sitting over there. Let's try to clean and everything. And it was sitting over there, and Chris looked over. He happened to just look over, and these people had the deer eyes. Like, they were sitting there. They stopped eating everything, man. They just they were just listening intently. It, it was just like in a restaurant. Normally, the volume is super high, but it was like the volume just came down. And my voice just carried, and it, you could just hear me clearly like I had a bullhorn. And what was going on, y'all? You know what I'm saying? It was like they can hear me clearly. And I began to just talk about all the demonic stuff and strongholds and 23 minutes of hell and people burning for eternity. And these people stopped eating for a good minute. And Chris got my attention. I feel like I got talking like, yeah, what's going on? Man, you need to be mindful of what you're saying, man. These people over here, man, they listening to you, man. They stop eating and everything, man. And it shows that the, the harvest is right. People need the gospel. Now, I didn't go over and talk to them. I said, Chris, man, the Lord put it on your heart. Go on over there. <laughs> One plant, another water. I plant, so you need to go water. You know what I'm saying? God will bring me in, you know what I'm saying? I did my job. I planted it for you. You know what I'm saying? It shows that the harvest is plentiful. And God encourages Paul here to be mindful. Don't be fearful because I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. Don't be fearful. I need you to go forth because I have made the harvest. Political. I need you to go for it. There are people who I've already, I've used people to plant. Now I need you to water because I'm in position. I'm ready to bring the increase. I'm ready to bring the increase. But I need you to be obedient. That's why we need prayer, y'all. We all need prayer that we will be mindful and never get fearful to do the things that God would have us to do. That's why God encouraged Paul. Don't be afraid. Speak. No matter where you go, no matter what location, no state, city, wherever you go, don't be fearful for speak. Because I have many people. There are many people here. You don't even know that I have many people in this place that I sent you to. You don't know that, but I just need you to speak. And if you speak, I will cause them to turn unto me and save and deliver because the harvest is plentiful. And Paul was obedient to the Lord. And he did what it was that God asked for him to do. Not like Peter, who didn't take heed to that word that we talked about earlier, but he failed. 
But Paul here, he took heed to the word, and God used him mightily. And the last thing we're going to talk about here with Paul, it's only a few verses. Another my story that's awesome with Paul, which talks about why it's so important that we need prayer, y'all. And it's in the Corinthians where Paul is getting ready to go preach the gospel again. And it shows us why uh, we need prayer and we need to be mindful not only of uh, the gospel and preaching, but being mindful of each other and why we need prayer ourselves. It says here in verse 12, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and the door was open unto me of the Lord. So his number one goal when he came to Troas was to preach the gospel. We need to pray that we aren't timid when God opens up a door. He said, when I came to Troas, a door was opened up unto me. I didn't just show up and just to be showing up. He said, when I got there, a door was opened up. God knows how to open up a door. That's why he makes it known that the harvest is ripe. That the word has been planted. Now, I need somebody to come and water because he's ready to bring the increase. A door was open unto me. How did a door just happen? A door didn't just happen to open up. God had the door waiting. He was just ready. We're looking for somebody who was willing to go and water what he had already planted. So Paul was ready. He said a door was open unto me to preach the gospel. And look what else he says in the midst of him not only coming to preach, but look what else happened. He said also, I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus my brother. But taking my leave of him, I went from thence into Macedonia. It's this is why we all need prayer, that we not only have a concern for lost souls, but for our brothers and sisters in the Lord. That we be mindful. This is why we all need prayer, y'all. That we will be mindful of our brothers and sisters. Not only those that are lost, but those who were once in the fold. Those who, were, who we haven't seen in a while. Those that we need to pray for. That sometimes make a phone call. One day I was looking... At this list I made years ago, uh, when I first started getting people's names and phone numbers and email addresses, and I kept this list, it was like 300 people or something on this list, and I put people in a category, and I made a category that was, this is for people who always come to Bible study, this category is for people who come to Bible study sometimes, and this is a category for people who rarely come to Bible study. And every so often I would send a text message, send a call, just check on people, say, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. And that's a lot of people to keep track of, but from time to time, I would just call these people up. And it's so amazing that when people are out of the fold for some time and they don't see how far they've been drifted away from the Lord until you give them a call and you encourage them or say something to them, then it tries to it draws their minds back into where God would have them to be. And Paul acknowledges here that I found no rest in my spirit because I couldn't find Titus, my brother. I know the gospel needed to be preached. I know I needed to do this, this, and that. But I had no rest in my spirit because I couldn't find my brother. I was concerned about the gospel, but I was concerned about my brother in the Lord. I was concerned about his spiritual state. I don't know about the state of my brother right now, but I need to be mindful of his state as well. I need to be mindful of the person that's lost, and I need to be mindful of the person who may be very well on the verge of being lost. This is why we need prayer, y'all. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters. Those Sometimes it's always good to just give somebody a call from time to time. Like, hey, what's going on? I just want to see how you're doing. Just want to encourage you and pray that you're continuing to do the things of God. That you continue to walk with God. We all need prayer because you never know how the enemy may slip in and try to cause us to fall away from the fold. And the other example with Paul that he talks about even here. This is why it's so important. Not only that we pray for our brothers and sisters, but sometimes we need prayer ourselves. And he talks about how the Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. For he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain, which means my imprisonment. Though so Onesiphorus came and he ministered unto Paul when Paul was in imprisonment. It says, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and he found me. When he came to Rome, he didn't come to just visit. He didn't come to the shop, check out the latest Jordans, get those new Michael Antonio women's uh, nice shoes or the newest stilettos or purses. He came to be mindful about my state and how I was doing right here. He was mindful of me. That's why we all need prayer. Because even Paul being so mighty in the Lord that he was, 
Paul needed encouragement too. He was a mighty man of God, but sometimes even leaders need encouragement. That's why but people sometimes brush it off when pastors or preachers or a bishop gets in a pulpit and they say, pray for me while I'm up here. Because you don't know the spirits and the things that's coming at the pulpit. And when they say pray, you need to be prayerful and mindful because the enemy wants to subvert the word of God and try to block the move of God. He ain't going to stop the move of God because God going to do what he wants to do anyway because the enemy ain't big enough, bad enough, or strong enough to stop what God wants to do. But we need to be mindful of those when they say pray for me. They for real need to pray. We all need prayer. And Paul also begins to say, the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. He said how he refreshed my spirit and he encouraged me. Even leaders need a refreshing or an encouragement. Paul begins to leave that testimony. We don't even know what Onesiphorus did. It didn't say that he was an apostle or he was this and that. It didn't have to address those type of things. All it laid out was the fact that this was a man of God that came and encouraged the man of God. This is why we all need prayer, that we keep each other in prayer and that we be mindful of our brothers and sisters. Not only the preaching of the gospel, be being mindful when the enemy may try to slip in and try to take us out, but being mindful of the word of God and holding on to it, but also being being mindful of our brothers and sisters, those we may not have seen in a while, and those who may need that encouragement. You may never know who may need an encouraging word. You may never know where people are at that time. They need, they may need a word of God. This is why we all need prayer. And the thing I'm gonna leave you with, uh, some years ago, I was uh, here on campus. And it's interesting, things don't just happen by accident. Stuff don't happen, you know, they just accidentally called you. Or you accidentally ran into nobody. No, stuff don't just accidentally happen. I was on campus getting ready to go into Market on Man. I think we had just got out of Bible State. And somebody had a meal plan, y'all. And so I was having like, hey, you got spice? Oh, you got to go to the, oh, we about to go to the camp and break bread and fellowship. That's what the world said. They broke bread and fellowship. So we, we broke, we ate, we had the spiritual. So now we about to fellowship by breaking bread. You know what I'm saying? So we getting ready to go to the camp. I'm excited about getting some free food. And we going in there, and I get a text message from somebody random. I'm like, they looking for some fee, uh, some woman. And I'm like, uh, no, this ain't such. And I'm like, who is this? Oh, this is such and such. I was like, no, this ain't their phone. This is that brother X one. This, this, and that. And you know what I'm saying? So I, uh, they was like, cool, and this and that. And they said something else in the text. You know, I kind of ignored it. Put it in my pocket. I kind of read it a little bit. But I wasn't paying attention because I was getting ready to go and get these fries, this hamburger, these chicken fingers, and whatever they had. I was ready to eat, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I was feeling good. Just got that thing, you know, feeling good. You know what I'm saying? And then after we got down breaking bread and fellowshipping, I started to head home. And this is why we need prayer that we're walking in the spirit because God is always mindful of his people. Even though when we ain't mindful of them, we ain't paying attention. I went home, it was about 1 o'clock. You know, we was out having fun. We was chilling over there. I got home about 1 about 1 30, getting ready to go to bed, you know, I'm feeling a little feeling good, I'm feeling a little tired. And the Lord brought back to my mind that, that text message. Like go back to your phone and read that text message. And I went back to the text message and I began to read it because I really didn't read it, I kind of skimmed it. And in the text message, the person said, okay, and they said, uh, do you have some time? I need somebody to talk to because I just lost my uh twin brother and I, I'm uh I feel like I'm at a loss right now because I really am feeling like committing suicide right now. And I need somebody to talk to. And this was like five or six hours ago, y'all. And I began to read the text. I'm like, oh, Jesus. And so I called them right then on the phone. I called them. I didn't care. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. And I began to talk to them. And they just began to break down. This was a man of God, and they was really contemplating killing themselves right then. And I called them on the phone, they began to break down and cry. And I started praying for them, interceding for them in the name of Jesus. I come against that suicide spirit. The devil is a lie. You shall live and not die. You shall declare the works of the Lord. You shall be who it is that God has called you to be. I don't care what's happening. The devil is a lie. The devil, take your hands off of it. In the name of Jesus, right now, bind that spirit of God right now. And they begin to cry out to God. And God began to break the yoke because the Bible says that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And the anointing came in through the midst of the phone and the word broke that yoke. And that person is a man of God today. They are directing choirs for their church. They are being used mightily in the ministry. And God is 
using them for his glory. But just imagine if I was not on purpose, if I was not focused, if I didn't keep my mind staying on the things of God, where would that person be? Because they were really constantly killing themselves because they thought when they lost their twin brother, they didn't know what else to do? This is why we need prayer because in the midst of a loss, people can lose faith in the Lord. But this is why we need prayer. We have to keep ourselves prayed up so that when the Spirit is speaking, He's trying to get our attention that we move swiftly. I love using that word swiftly because sometimes we need to move swiftly. You know what I'm saying? To do the things that God would have us to do. And it's so awesome that God is mindful of His people. So I pray definitely. As the year begins to end and we're getting ready to go into the summer, people are getting ready to go away. They might be going to other cities, other states. That we all be mindful of each other. That we continue to pray for each other because we all need prayer. And that we never find ourselves, even if we're the only person there, that we never find ourselves compromising wherever we may go, but that we understand God created us to stand out. We, we weren't created to blend in with anybody. But that we be a witness for Jesus wherever we go. And that we may be used, that the gospel may be furthered wherever we go, that a testimony is left there about Jesus. And that we be not only concerned about lost souls, but we be concerned about each other. Take time, maybe this weekend or even tonight, to call somebody up that you may not have seen in a long time. Just say, hey, just checking up on you, seeing how you're doing. Haven't seen you in a while, I just want to pray that you stay encouraged in the Lord. Because we all need prayer. So I pray that we definitely stay encouraging the Lord and that we continue to pray for each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. I feel like